If you're interested in making OLED station displays for your Motorola that can be controlled via DCC, this video is for you. Let's talk about it. Recently, I've spent a lot of time experimenting with electronics. I want to help the modeler understand what can be achieved with limited knowledge and a limited budget like myself. What we'll look at here is the hardware and the, the connections in its most basic form. So at the heart of the system here is the Arduino Nano here. Then the little guy here is the OLED screen. And then we're going to need some sort of power supply. So this is a, a DC power supply that I use for bench test. Um, obviously other ways you can do that um, around the layer if needs be with power supply buses and the like. Um, this very simple one we'll show you to start with is going to be with a push button. So the first connection we're going to look at, we need to power up the Nano. So we need a 5 volt DC going to the, the VIN pin of the Nano. Then also on the flip side of that, we need the ground supply to supply the negative to the Nano. Then we're going to go for from the A4 pin of the nano, which is the, the data pin, which is going to the, the, the what they call the serial clock, which is the SSC. Next pin we're going to look at doing is the A5 pin, which is the serial clock pin, which is, goes to the SDA pin of the OLED display. So the next one is the ground pin. So the ground pin of the Arduino needs to go to the ground pin of the OLED display. And likewise, we need a five volt output which goes to the VCC of the OLED display. So the next thing we're going to look at is the push button here. So what happens there though, so it's the D2 pin. So we're looking at a ground that's going to pull this to ground. And the other side goes to the ground pin of the Arduino. So what it's doing, uh, the ground input is connected to the input of the push button on the output side of the connector, e.g. on this occasion the D4 pin. So when the button is depressed, the, the D4 pin will be pulled to ground, activating it and also then changing the message on the display. So this is going to only be able to change the message once. So what we actually do is, so the rest of the messages will be connected to further push buttons if you want to do it that way in its most crudest form. So you're looking at digital pins 5, 6, 7 and 8 if you want to go to up, to, up to 5 different messages. So in this part of the video, we'll, I'm going to look at guiding you through the process of programming your Arduino in the IDE, which is what we got up on the screen there. So basically what, what we're going to learn out of here is how you display the text on the OLED display and how to add different texts. Um, so this code is not my code, but it's from, from Rudy's hobby channel and I will link it below because he has a other nice little tu uh, a basic tutorial how to run it. So the first thing we're going to look at is up the top here is this line number three. So this is where it's giving away what cables or what, how we're going to wire it. We've just explained that. But obviously, it all needs to be defined and where I get that information from. So we've got the, the, the two, uh, so the I2C wires, which are from the OLED display. So the SDA to A4, CSL clock to A5. Then lines five through to seven is what we're looking at the the pins so each pin so that's d pin d sorry so this is where we define the digital output pins and how many messages we've got so on this example we've got pins two three four five six and seven so that's giving us up to up to six different messages that we can put on to or output on the OLED display. So what we'll do now go through is to line between line 144 and 176. So this is sort of where all the magic sort of happens. So as I said, I've only set up four different messages here. However, you can do as many as you want effectively. Um, you're only limited by how many output pins you're using. So if you're going to use a, an Arduino, Uno or Mega, you could 
be outputting dozens of different uh, outputs, but each different message is going to require a different DCC address, and I will get to that shortly, how that comes about. So this is the format of how Rudy has come up with it. So just be mindful, each line can only have a certain amount of characters, so 10, 14, and 14. So, um, so between the brackets and the inverted commas there is the text that we can have. And as I said, you can have anything um, and what you want. So how do you add more if you wish to do that? So all you need to do, as I said, Rudy's example, is, Rudy's example has six examples, but you can add many more. It's just a matter of following the, the, the syntax that he's come up with, so the exact syntax as he's saying, um, and then it's a matter of copying, pasting, but be mindful that the more you add, be mindful if you added more examples, you need to define more digital pins, which is up, as we said before, up lines uh, five to seven so if you're going to add one more you're going to have to add another line in here after 10 um, to be pin number eight or well, sorry pin number be pin number nine sorry and then so on so the next thing i'll show you very very quickly i've done it in previous videos but i will just recap on it is to upload the sketch so the first thing we need to look at is going into the tool memory menu and we're going to go pick what port we're going to go in so i know on this occasion it's going to be com port number 15 and then we're just going to make sure that we're choosing the correct board which is the nano which is what we've got here and then what we did i just copied and pasted this so for your windows users out there I, I went into the website of rudy's and i will link that below copy and paste so Control c and Control v into into a new uh, a sketch pad here. And then from that, to make sure that we got all the syntax right, we just go to this tick, which then verifies. And you can see down the bottom here how it's coming up with compiling the sketch. And compiling done. So if you do come up with an error, it will normally be in around line 17. So if you do get an error saying you don't have the library for line 17, I'll just quickly show you how, in my, in my case, we did do that. So it's just a matter of going to the tools menu at the top here, go to manage libraries, and it should come up with a little pop-up screen like that. So that is going away to the Arduino website, the library. So in this case, it's add a, add a fruit underscore SSD 1306 and you can see there on the bottom there I've already got mine installed so it's at the top there so it's just a matter of you can pick what a version you want I've installed the latest version so it's a matter of installing and then it should be good to go recompile the sketch and then go into it so at this point once we're all good to go we can now upload the sketch to the, the we can upload the sketch to the nano it'll do a whole lot of magic down the bottom here just show you a little bit more what's going on and then done uploading so that's all we need to do so let's head over to do some bench testing so here we got the, the sign here so that's up on screen there is message one sorry i don't have any other push buttons unfortunately you can't actually see what i've done here so that blue wire i've just gone to pin number three d3 that's gone to d d4 d5 D6. What we're going to look at now is how I do the, the, the DCC control. So with the DCC control, basically what happens, we do away with anything to do with the push button. So we're going to look at controlling that in a different way. So what we're going to need now is we're going to need a, a relay. And obviously we're using DCC commands, so we're going to need some sort of command station, in my case the Roco Z29. So the first thing we'd look at is a normally open, which will go to our digital input pin, uh, D, D4 on our, on our case. Then we need to, because we're pulling it to ground, uh, we need some sort of ground pin going to the common of the relay. Then we need to power up and to be able to energize the, the relay contacts. So we're going to go for the 5 volt off the Mardek 
which in turn will go to the VCC of the relay. And then on the flip side of that, we need a ground pin and so does the relay. So we're going the ground pin off the, Mar off the Mardic to the ground pin of the relay. And then we need to be able to control the relay on this occasion with a DCC address. So on this occasion, we're gonna be controlling it on say binding post number one and whatever DCC um, switch command you're gonna give that. So that uh, the output of the DCC station or decoder will go to the, the in pin or the IN one pin on this occasion. So in the case of four messages, as we explained above, you'll need to subsequently index these so you'll go pins one say three to four if you've got four messages and and also that it'll then se sequence the the number of dcc addresses the next ones we need to look at we need some sort of dcc so the a and b rail will go to the dcc input of the mardex so we can get the dcc commands across so before we go over to the bench to, to test the circuit out we'll have a quick word from our sponsor pcbway.com so over to you guys and girls this video is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. If you're a tinkerer, inventor, or an advanced electrical engineer, PCBWay have you covered. Or you are seriously missing out. Passionate about PCBs, but PCBWay do not stop there. They also offer 3D print, injection molding, or CNC machining, assembly, or basic PCB manufacturing. They can do it all for a very competitive price. Check out their awesome services in the link below and also a special offer to anyone who supports my channel. So that's the rig in and it's all its glory there. So top left is obviously the Arduino. The middle is the, the OLED display. Now the, the right hand side there, that's the Mardic. So you can either use the Mardic, which is an Arkamora product or a DCC station decoder. I'll link below to the one I've built previously to this. Um, so the bottom right there, that's the bank of the relays um, as described. So so I've got four messages displaying here, so I need four different relays. So what we're going to look at doing there, we've got uh, address number 14, which we should toggle it to message number one. And then we're going to toggle it to address number 15, which in turn will toggle it to message number two. And address number 16, message number three. So all these messages are referring to the order in what I've given them on, on the Arduino sketch. And the last one is a bit of a fun one. Obviously, I have dress number 17, which is what I've put subscribe and hit that little bell and thank you. So on this next segment, we're quickly gonna go through the code within Train Controller. So I'm assuming you'd be able to achieve similar results within iTrain and also JMRI. All right, so what am I trying to sort of achieve here? So one idea is to use Train Controller to send DCC commands to the OLED display, um, which would then update relevant information regarding what uh, train schedule the train is on. Another idea is to trigger the display with specific information on the OLED display based on certain events such as arrival and departure of a train. So that's pretty well what I'm looking at doing in this video in a reasonably crude form because we've only got a certain amount of information that we can put on the OLED display. So I'll briefly show you how I set up a, an accessory button using a DCC address that can be achieved when a what I'm going to call a block is occupied and even one step further will we'll show you how how a particular train will activate a particular DCC address and switch that address which in turn will switch the OLED display with its own individual message um, for that particular train. All right, so we'll just show you how to set up one of these buttons. So as I said, I've got four messages here as set out on the Arduino sketch, but they're pretty well all the same. It's just sequential the way I've set them up. So the first thing we need to look at is the DCC address. So the first DCC address we're looking at using is address number 14. So that is directly correlates to what address I've put into the Mardek, or if you've got other stationary decoders, what you're gonna use there. For a message side of things, I'm just going to call it message one because it, it's referred to message one in the sketch. And other than that, there's nothing else that we need to do. So physically, if I was to switch that button on and off now, we could toggle through the different messages on the OLED display. So where most of this mag magic is happening, trailer is things called these, these flagmen. So they're like little internal switches that we can use but in electronic means and i'll show you how we do that so how do i first thing is it we need to add a trigger to it so a trigger is how we're going to turn this particular flagman on or off in this case so within train controller we're going to look at the block of lms7 
which is this top one here, which was one of the main platforms for my rail car and commuter trains. And we're gonna set that up that that needs to be a current block. So pretty well what that means within train controller is a train is in that block. So I've gone, gonna go one step further as I described is now, I don't want just any train sending off message number one. I only want the commuter train number one. So that's obviously a little bit beyond the scope of this tutorial, but within train control, we can set up individual groups or vehicle types with descriptions that can set off automations like on this occasion. So only commuter train number one will set off message number one. With that is, it'll then switch on message number one button it's gonna wait two seconds and toggle itself off. So the reason why we have to do that is if we leave that button on, I've found that if you don't clear the button, cause this is all based around simple physical push buttons, which is a normally open button. If we have something that's left on, so like a toggle switch, we can't then use other inputs via the other digital pins. So we need to, to turn it off. It will still display the message until we activate it with another train. So that's pretty well the train controller in its very most basic form. Um, I'm still testing how this is all gonna work. My train controller switchboard here. So the blocking question that we're gonna start looking at this reasonably basic automation with within train controller is this LMS7 here, which is at the top of the screen. So you'll see the buttons here that I've made um, in regards to the DCC addresses and how they all work. So. So the way I've set it up in its most basic form is, so I've got, this, so what, what I'm trying to do is replicate. So when a train comes into this block over on the OLED display there, it'll display a different message depending on the train. So we'll start with this commuter one train and you can see that up the top here, it fires off message number one. And then what we've got down here is you can see that we've got commuter one train we're in station, which is where we're at. We're at Mitcham Station, and that's gonna go through to Barham, which is to the left of the screen. So for them to take that one out. So the next one we're gonna look at is bringing in my rail car number, number two here. So we'll just drop that on, and as you can see, we've brought up a new message, which is Mitcham to Pioneer via Riversley. So that is sort of down this, this section here, the layout here, it goes to the main station of Pioneer. So the third message we're looking at is rail car number three. And you can see that brings up uh, the sign of Mitcham to Nancy via Bell, which is also off this part of this of, of my layout. That's the automation how I want it to work in its most basic form. Obviously, I will play around with the actual wording of this and try to squeeze a little bit more text in there maybe maybe downsize the size of the clock a little bit but I, on the whole I actually um, like how it's come out and it looks really really nice and it's just a, a great little added feature to add a bit of automation to your layout so this is the end of the video so it was quite a fun project to put together and relatively easily once you sort of broke down the different components and how they're connected it was a reasonably quick build to put together so as always, I have three questions I like to post to everyone. So please make sure you put them in the comments below. So question number one, would this be, would this be the sort of system you might use on your model railway? Number two, if so, what sort of tweaks might you use to make this project a lot better to suit your needs? And number three, like always, how could I have done this better or the design I've done or maybe even simplify it even further, that'd be great to hear from you. If you like this video, we'd be super grateful if you give it a big thumbs up. The YouTube algorithm loves the engagement, so let's give it a little bit of love. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming content. Thanks a bunch for watching. See you in the next video. Blessings to you all and peace out.